Today we're going to have a look at symbols used in context and data flow diagrams and although they may look the same, they're different. They're slightly different with what objects use and sometimes what even the object means itself when used in that actual correct diagram. So first we've got shapes used in a context diagram and remember a context diagram is used to show a holistic yet simple view of an entire information system. So what we have first is an external entity and this is basically any element that either inputs into the system or receives information from the system. It could be a person such as a customer or it could even be a product with a barcode that gets scanned and then inputs data into the synth system. So it's basically where we're gathering information from and in the end where's it going to end up. Okay the next thing we have is our process circle. Now a process is basically data goes into the actual process and then at the end of this process the information comes out. Within the context of a context diagram the process is the entire information system so there's only ever one circle in a context diagram representing the entire information system. Finally we have the flow lines and the flow lines represent data going in and out of the information system itself in a context diagram. So we'll have lines going in showing what data is going into the information system and then lines going back out to the external entities showing the information they're receiving from the information system. All right, so next we'll take a look at the actual symbols used in a data flow diagram. So once again, we have our external entity. Okay, and here external entity means the exact same thing. It is once again some sort of entity inputting into the system or receiving information from the system, but it, it could also be going in in a specific point of the processes itself this time as well. Because one of the differences with a uh, data flow diagram is that the process symbol is different in this actual diagram. In a context diagram, we only ever had one process being the entire information system itself. In this diagram, we can have multiple processes. We're actually breaking the information system up into its multiple processes. So we're expecting to see multiple circles in this diagram, all saying what sub-processes are going on with data, transforming it into information. The flow lines have the same meaning once again, and they're showing the data, how it's changed and what's been setting from the external entity to the processes and between the processes themselves and how the data is changing. And then what we have in this diagram that's not in a context diagram at all is a data store. And a data store is like a saved location. So data may be saved there to be uh, for later use and it's also retrieved there to bring up data about certain things. So a data store may be a customer database or a store database. And a store database would have product inventory. And we need to call upon that information in our information system so we have that information about our products. So I hope this has all given you a clear understanding of although how the symbols are similar between a context diagram and a data flow diagram, there is quite a few differences between how the symbols are used. Mainly it's the circle itself being that there is only ever one circle in a context diagram representing the entire information system. Whereas in a DFD, there can be multiple circles representing each process of an information system and that data stores are only ever used and represented in data flow diagrams. So I hope that all makes sense.